first point that I want to make is that Air Steve is not the first Democratic election that Haiti has ever had. In fact, they've had many uh, elections. And so the elections that I know about, at the very least, Leslie Manigat. Leslie Manigat in 1988 was elected president. He won 50.2% of the vote. And the second place winner was Hubert de Ronsoray. So Leslie Manigat beat the shit out of Hubert by 30%. So he only got 20%. He got 50%. Beat him by 30%. So basically beat the shit out of everybody. Beat him by 30 points. Uh, 20%, 14, 9, 3. So uh, it was the overwhelming, uh, it got a majority, barely won the majority, but uh, smashed the competition. So clearly uh, has a mandate. It was only, a turnout rate was only 4%, but let's just do the American way. If one person shows up, that's good enough. So in 1988, this would be after the 1987 elections. The 1987 elections, of course, was the massacre, the bloodshed. Uh, the Haitian people have died. They have bled for the right to have a free and fair democracy, for the people to actually be allowed to be a part of their government. So in 1987, two candidates were assassinated, just straight up assassinated. Uh, and then uh, 30 to 300 students, Haitian students, had died just because they went to uh, go vote. And the 1987 general election was canceled. This was right after one year after Baby Doc had uh, begged the U.S. to get an Air Force uh, jet to take them to France because he was like, oh shit, the Haitian people have turned on them. So, 87, you had the bloodshed. They redid the election January 17, 1988. 4% of the population voted. 1 million Haitians voted. And out of those 1 million, here in this book, you have uh, Sinio Vincent. They're saying he was the president during the 1930s, 1930 to 1941, so for 11 years, a dissolvent of men and institution. Borno was kicked out of power in 1930 by a general strike, an overwhelming wave of anti-Americanism. He was replaced by Sinio Vincent. Now, for the most part, even though I can't stand occupation and empire, the American occupation had brought about elections, and they had built hospitals and schools, and so uh, it brought about a stable situation for the Haitian people to finally get their shit together, and the occupation went for about 20 years from 1915 to 1934. The, at the very end of it, Stenio Vincent, 1930, would be elected president, and it says here, Vincent was the first freely elected president in this century. So that's according to uh, Lionel. The recap, essentially, Manigat, Leslie Manigat was elected president in 1988, which was before Aristide. So Aristide was not the first presidential election. You also had Stenio Vincent. Uh, according to Lionel Paquin, he was the first elected president with the occupation, with the American occupation there. Now, there was two other presidents under the occupation before Stenio Vincent. You had the Philip Sudre d'Artigunave. Then you also had Louis Borno. So Louis Borno and Philippe Sudre d'Artigunave. So you had three elections, at least three elections, or three presidents. There had to been some kind of military election, because how do you elect a president unless they're electing themselves? So I guess I'm assuming that there could have been two other elections during the U.S. occupation. Stenio Vincent definitely was elected. Leslie Manigat was definitely elected before Eris. Woodrow Wilson. Woodrow Wilson was an imperialist. He invades Veracruz, Mexico. He got us into World War One. A lot of people died for no apparent reason, just for imperialism, imperialism, the sake of imperialism. So uh, I'm very uh, hesitant, very skeptical. This is in our front yard, right, the island of Haiti, uh, the Monroe Doctrine is to prevent all the other powers from invading. That's the pretense. Now, there was one stat. Seven presidents were killed or deposed in seven years. So that is pretty bad. And so seven presidents were killed or resigned or something happened to them. So 1915, the very last one, you're going to have this guy, Jean Vilbrun Guillaume Sam. So this Mr. Sam, Mr. President Sam. So Mr. Sam is going to get fucking murdered. He's going to get killed in so many different ways. The people of Haiti will not like. President Sam was actually, before he became president, was the commander of Haiti's Northern Division when he led the revolt that brought President Cincinnati Leconte to power. So he already was in one coup d'etat. He led, headed the revolt that toppled President 
Oreste Zamor. Sam was proclaimed president when his predecessor, Joseph Davilmar Theodore, was forced to resign February 25, 1950, when he was unable to pay the militiamen called Caicos, who had helped him overthrow Zamor. So they were trying to, okay, so several overthrows. So now he's the president, right? So President Sam, February 25th, 1915. He's the fifth president in five turbulent years. Sam was forced to contend with a revolt against his own regime led by Dr. Rosalvo Bobo, who opposed the government's expanded commercial and strategic ties with the United States, fearing that he would share the same fate as his predecessors. So he needed to be a bigger dick, right? So he acted harshly. President Sam helps to bring to power Cincinnati's Leconte. He takes down Oreste Zamor. So Zamor is sitting in jail. Now, actually, I don't hate this. This is pretty bloody and pretty psychotic. But he wanted to be very harsh against his political opponents, and especially the more better educated and the wealthier mulatto population. So this is a black, right? This is black power. You want to talk about... Francis Dubier, what about this Sam, you know, President Sam? So uh, he, on uh, July 27th, 1915, he ordered the execution of 167 political prisoners, including the former president, Oreste Zamor, who was being held in the Port-au-Prince jail. This infuriated some of the population, which rose up against Sam's government as soon as news of the executions had reached him. Then President Sam runs to the French embassy, where he received asylum, but then the rebels, mulatto, fled to the French embassy, right? But that doesn't matter. They gave him asylum, but the rebel mulatto leaders broke into the embassy and they found Sam. They dragged him out, beat him senseless. They threw his limp body over the embassy's iron fence to the population who then ripped his body into pieces, paraded parts throughout the capital's neighborhoods. And for two weeks, the country was in total chaos. So he killed 167 political prisoners. Clearly a faction of Haitians didn't like that and tore... Uh, President Sam into pieces, uh, ripped them into shreds. This is just like the chimpanzees. Chimpanzees are a warlike society versus the bonobos, which are a matriarchal society. So there's one alpha male amongst the chimpanzees until he's not the alpha male no more because the other lesser alphas ripped them into fucking pieces. So it sounds that's exactly what happened here. It's also what happened to Dessaline. It also what happened to have the news of the murder reaches the American Navy and, uh, uh, Navy ships anchored in the city's harbor. So Woodrow Wilson was kind of prepared for some bullshit happening. And, you know, five presidents in five years, seven presidents in seven years, whatever it is, uh, he was worried, uh, wary of the events in Haiti. And then eventually, once that had happened, he was afraid a Bobo would take power. So uh, instead of the possibility of Bobo, he was afraid of some guy named him Bobo. Oh, no, Bobo might take power. Who the fuck is Bobo? I don't know, but oh, the Dr. Rosalvo Bobo. So very, I guess, you know, against uh, the U.S., very much against the U.S., so much so that it scared the shit out of Woodrow Wilson, so Woodrow Wilson invades after President Sam is murdered by his countrymen for uh, massacring all those educated mulattoes, those elite, wealthy, elite mulattoes is the exact event that precipitated right before then. So President Sam, he was murdered on July 25th, 1915, and then July 28th, 1915, Woodrow Wilson invades. And he said it was because of the Germans, the German might invade Haiti, and so it was some bullshit, right? So use that pretense because of World War One. Well, the Germans might invade it. There's such, you know, it, there's so so much chaos that's going there. They might do the same shit we're about to do. So total bullshit reason for invading. But the they were going to bring some stability, which is actually uh, very reminiscent of today with Minister and the United Nations. The there is still a United Nations occupation. The Haitian government, the Haitian people, do not run themselves. They are being occupied. Uh, they're allowed to have elections, and they're allowed to run their own internal affairs as long as they allow cauldrons. Dr. Rosalvo Bobo, so Dr. Bobo was a Haitian politician who opposed the U.S. occupation of Haiti in 1915. He led the Caicos, the Cacos Rebellion, in response to the landing of U.S. Marines at Port-au-Prince, July 28, 1915. But after the death of the President, Sam, uh, William B. Capuchin orders the Marines to go into Port-au-Prince, and then Bobo was prevented from becoming president. 
with Felipe Sudre D'Artignalve being installed as a U.S. puppet. So then Bobo leaves. Bobo tried to fight the uh, occupation, but he goes to Cuba. Then he goes on to Jamaica. Then eventually he moves to France, and he's going to die there in France, not in Haiti. He wants to fight for the so sovereignty of Haiti. And he was like, what? The white man's coming back again? What the fuck? And then he died in France. To bring the point home, Leslie Manigat was elected president in 1988 by over 50% of the vote by over half a million Haitians. There was over 1 million Haitians that voted in the election, and then 534,110 Haitians voted for Leslie Manigat after two politicians were assassinated in 1987 and 30 to 300 students were killed for uh, going in to you know, go to vote. And so the, a lot of Haitian people, politicians, and students have died just for the right to vote. Now, the Manigat, the, a lot of people say Aristide was the first elected president. Not true. Leslie Manigat was uh, elected before him in 1988. He's going to be deposed in the coup d'etat four months later. Doesn't mean that his presidency wasn't legitimate. He was the actual legitimate president. Now, Felipe, he was the president under the occupation, U.S. occupation from 1915 to 19. This is what he looks like. He's a mulatto with a mustache, right? So before you had Sam, President Sam was actually a black man, and now you have a mulatto. So you have a mulatto. He was born April 6, 1863. He was president from 1915 to 1922 for seven years under the U.S. occupation. After Felipe Sudre D'Artig Nave, you're going to have Borno, Louis Borno. And he is going to, he's of mixed race, the son of a white French father and a black Haitian mother. So he's mixed. He is half black, half white. So this is a step up because the mulattoes were in charge for seven years and it's a mostly black republic. So it's kind of crazy that the mulattoes are the elites, and they've been running shit for such a long time. It began with Peshan. Peshan killed Dessaline, right? Louis Borno is elected by the state council on April 10th, 1922, to the surprise of the Americans. Borno, however, soon came to an agreement with Russell, he maintained a policy of honest and frank cooperation, persuaded the Americans to help develop the country economically. Haitian state was deeply in debt. So, Borno relied on the Catholic Church. He went to the U.S. He met Calvin Coolidge. He settled old border conflicts with the Dominican. So, anyways, that's Lori Borno. Uh, Louis Borno was in there for eight years. And uh, not elected, I guess, it said by a state council. So, not by the people. But the first elected in 1900s, according to Lionel Paquin, was Stenio Joseph Vincent, and he was elected in 1930, November 18th, 1930, and he ruled the 1930s until 1941. Uh, the Haitians elected representatives to the National Assembly for the first time since 1918 and elected Vincent as president. This is a pretty remarkable man. You have Stenio Vincent, born in Port-au-Prince, Port-au-Prince. So he's born in Poto Prince and he graduated from law school at 18 before ascending to the head of Haiti's Chamber of Deputies. And by 1915, he ran a nationalist campaign for the presidency based on his fierce opposition to the U.S. occupation. From 1915 to 1934, uh, U.S. had occupied Haiti. The Marines occupied Haiti. The U.S. had intervened after the murder of a president. President Sam, in August 1934, U.S. President Franklin D. Roosevelt withdrew the Marines. However, the U.S. had still financial control and indirect control. So Vincent was the president, 1930 to 1941. He conducted a plebiscite about extending his term in office and received a favorable vote to extend it to 1941. So he's elected president and re-elected to to get into his successor, Eli Lescott, to see precisely what had happened. He's going to disband the Haitian Communist Party. Vincent is. Stenio Vincent disbands the communists. So he starts Duvalier, right? He was anti-communist before uh, Duvalier was. And what the fuck is up with this hardline stance against communism? 1936 is when he disbanded the, disbanded the Communist Party. And 1935 is when he had the plebiscite to extend his tenure for another six years. He also had a uh, plebiscite an election, so he had another election which uh, approved an amendment to the Constitution that said that all future presidents had to be elected by popular vote. 
And so Eli Lescott would be the next president, and I'm not for sure exactly how he got his power, but it says at the very end that Vincent declared his intention to step down, then the presidency was peacefully transitioned to his successor. So the transfer of power for this guy is Jean Nicholas Nassad Saget. I just like his face. He's a black man with a white mustache, and he's got the white hair, and his the French, I don't like the French fucking style that they do, but uh, this looks like a cool black dude. This is a black, an old black man that can be like, you know what, I respect the whiteness of his mustache. <laughs> so, Saget, one thing on March uh, 19th, 1870, the National Assembly elected General Nassad Saget president of Haiti. So it wasn't elected by the people, elected by the National Assembly, which is their legislature, their parliament, the Chamber of Deputies and the Senate. Uh, and expired in 1874. The one thing I wanted to mention was that during his presidency, Jean Nicholas Nassad Saget attempted to observe the Constitution of 1867. So liberals were trying to get freedoms and trying to introduce the parliament system and executive legislative power. So 